Good afternoon. Um, we're off to a much better start than we were uh, yesterday, where we kind of struggled to get this call going. I'm, uh, first off, let me apologize for us not being able to get on a call yesterday. I guess uh, our friends at Zoom got a little overloaded, um, so uh, we'll have to forgive them of that. Thank you again for your patience. We have rescheduled that call, which was to talk about the, the Greensboro uh, COVID-19 relief fund that's being handled uh, with the United Way and the Community Foundation of Greater Greensboro. We've rescheduled that call for tomorrow at three o'clock, so uh, you won't miss that topic. We'll have um, folks from the Community Foundation and the United Way uh, with us tomorrow. I, I am Brent Christensen with the Chamber. It's great to have you all on with us. Um, let me set some things up here. First of all, uh, if you look down on your screen there, those of you all who haven't been joining us, um, we've got a chat button down there. That's where we would ask you all to post questions for our panelists today. Um, so we've got uh, a couple of folks with us and they're gonna be uh, joining us here in just a second. But as they are talking, as they are presenting, if you have any questions that come to mind, go ahead and post them there so that we can ask them uh, at the end of their presentations. You can follow us on uh, social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at GSO Chamber. That's it, at GSO Chamber for all the latest information. We send out daily emails regarding these calls to all of our members. Uh, so we record the call, any links that are mentioned, uh, any information we summarize. And so uh, you'll be getting that if you're a member of the chamber. If you're not a member of the chamber and you're on this call, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, all those links and resources to the recordings are on our website. There's a lot of uh, archived information there that you should go take a look at. That is at greensboro.org backslash COVID-19. Again, greensboro.org backslash COVID-19. Uh, last, before we get started, go fill out your census form. Uh, hopefully you've gotten one of those in the mail by now and they've got a unique code on there. It's very easy to go fill out your census form online. Um, we need our ranking to go up. It, uh, it means an awful lot for our community. It means extra funding at the federal level. It means uh, representation at the federal level. We're gonna need that as we come out on the other side of this. And so please do us a favor and go fill that out. So today we've got a great topic, I think a very interesting topic uh, about communication in these times of crisis and uncertainty. What, what should we be doing in terms of communication and marketing? Uh, we've got two great experts in this field, both of them local. Um, we think the world of both of them, Monty Hagler, is with us. He's the president and CEO of RLF Communications, a public relations and marketing firm. He's with us. And then Beth Bolton is the owner of Bolton Creative, a full service strategic mar marketing company in downtown Greensboro. The first person I'm going to welcome is Monty. Uh, Monty, welcome. We're glad you're joining us today. We'll go ahead and unmute your line. Um, David, if you could do that for us. Monty, are you with us? There he is. Monty, can you hear me? I can. Thank you, Excellent. Brent. There you are. Okay. So well, good. As we get into this. Go ahead. Tell us, tell us a little bit about the things you're you're seeing out there in the marketplace and, and, and what should we be thinking about um, now that we're in you know this this kind of never never land um, for most of us that nobody's ever seen before. Although it has to be um, congruous with some with some other experiences that you might have. What should we be thinking about from a marketing and communication standpoint right now? Well, I've been doing corporate communications and public relations for 30 years, and this is the strangest environment <laughs> that I've worked in. Uh, there certainly are some parallels to typical crisis communications, but but there's also some things that none of us have ever seen. But I think what what we're seeing is that at least for the past month, most companies have really spent more time focusing on what we would call public relations than on traditional sales and marketing because the environment is just so different. And you know, by, by public relations, I mean managing communications with key publics, the, the audiences who can really help you or hurt you by what they think, believe, say, and do. And so that spans internal audiences, that's that's managers, that's supervisors, that's employees, uh, it's suppliers, it's vendor partners. 
It's customers, but customers are just one group of that. They're, you know, when this situation has happened, it has impacted every uh, group that you depend on to help raise your, you know, grow your company, run your company, and so your communications have to span all of those groups, and they all have to take place at the same time. There has to be message consistency. That's a big thing that we've worked on with clients is message consistency. That if you were saying one thing to one group uh, of publics, but yet a different message to another, it is going to create huge challenges for you as an organization. And what are some examples of that, Monty? I mean, uh, 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 what, what are you seeing out there? Where, where are some pitfalls that people can get into specifically with those, those differing messages? Sure. So, so we have one client where we have been working on communication, and what we recommend is you really need to start with messaging from the top down. So think about what's that next message if it was going to come from the CEO or the executive director and get everybody on that internal leadership team to, to be good with what that message is. So you need input from legal, finance, operations, human resources, and marketing. And then after, after everybody feels good about what's the message that we want to send, what are the details, what's the tone, then you can, can customize it for all the different audiences that you need to reach out to. And you can sort of flesh out the details. But we saw an example just this week of where everyone had been on the same page and we sent out a communication, but the person who was in charge of communicating with vendors, okay, external suppliers, sent out a very different message in terms of why we were making certain decisions, how long those decisions were going to be in place, and that communication immediately got circulated among the vendor community and then posted online on social media and created a number of challenges. So that's what I mean by message consistency. Monty, do you think in a, in a time of uncertainty like right now, people are, are, are more willing to give a benefit of the doubt for things that might pop up like that or less willing to give a, be, a benefit of the doubt? Where, where are we in this, I, in this, in this continuum? I, yeah, uh, I think it is both. Um, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is this is a stressful time. So in all of the communications, we need to be respectful. Uh, we need to listen. We need to adapt when we need to. But I would also say that just like any other environment, no matter what companies say sometimes, there is going to be someone who disagrees. And, and they, because they're heightened, because it's, it's a more urgent situation, they're probably going to be sharper about it than they would have been in the past. So a lot of what we say is, you know, you need to expect criticism. When you've made decisions about what you're going to do as a company and how you're going to deal with this and how that affects your employees, how that affects, uh, affects your customers, and you communicate that, you can communicate it as clearly as possible, but you better expect criticism. Mm -hmm. And some of that criticism is going to come from your own employees. Some of that is going to come from your customers. And, you know, we see actually some of the worst comments on social media coming from either employees of that company or their, their family members, their relatives. Why are you making my employee go to work? You know, why are you making my husband go to work? Why are you having my wife work in an unsafe environment? And so part of this is being respectful, uh, answering politely, but sticking to this is the course of action we've, we've chosen, moderate it based on input if you need to, but you have to expect that you're going to be criticized. Yeah, yeah. Beth, let's bring you into the conversation here. What, what are some, some, some good things in terms of communications and marketing that you're seeing out there in today's environment in this, in this strange environment? And, and what are some things that you think could be done better? Do you have any specific examples along those lines and again welcome we're glad we're glad you're here oh thanks for having me um you know for us what we have been really looking at is trying to get a different approach of how we all are going to handle it for our clients and how we're looking forward of what, what's going to what are we going to be like in six months to a year from now and how we can plan ahead because right now every single day is different so you have to be agile 
And what we are doing is reaching out to clients and really coming up with a plan of how to market them and looking at different things that is going to adjust their business while we're working throughout this whole process and how it's going to affect their business and what we can do to put the message out there of saying that these are the people that you want to go to or how we want to get it. We have a lot of clients right now that are changing their marketing strategies based off of this. And how so, Beth? Give us, give us, a, give us an example. You don't have to name names. Or give we, um, you know, well, we have, um, you know, for example, we have a um, attorney office and family law attorney. And that family law attorney is really addressing what family law might look like and all the things that um, people, what's going to happen if my ex-husband gets um, the virus, what happens with um, these checks. Sorry, my dog is going to be barking throughout this. Um, and we're going to market it and write, and write stories and be the experts on try to, trying to help people navigate through this process. It's not so much that we're trying to get um, work out of this, but we're going to try to be, we're offering that advice and help with this. So it's more of being a thought leader and you know, really offering their expertise to people who need it right now. Yeah, I, I think I saw a, a funny tweet from somebody in the midst of kind of the first week of this uh, of this pandemic uh, where we were starting to shut down where it said, uh, everybody I've ever given my email to has now sent me a, an email about how they're responding to the, to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. I think we're beyond that phase at this point. Thank God. What you thank God exactly because because uh, it's filled up everybody's inbox inbox real fast. What are what are kind of the next phases that you you all can see in terms of the communications? Are there are there in in past maybe maybe learning from some of the past? Have you seen where there are distinct phases to something like this, or are we just in completely uncharted territory? The this is Monty. I'll take a, a stab at that. I, I've started referring to it as as we're going to see a jagged reentry, and that is that we are past that immediate crisis phase. We're moving into the midterm, and I and I love what Beth talked about planning for the long game. And uh, you know, companies are going to come back in at different points. It's not like that. There's going to be a checkered flag that gets waived uh, on April 28th or 29th when the stay at home order is lifted and every company comes out of this on the same footing. Different industries have been impacted in different ways and some will come back quicker than others. And so it really is about for each company figuring out where is our industry in this mess and then where are we positioned within this mess and how do we you know, accomplish the objectives we want to accomplish uh, based on that. So I think that it is about figuring out not where the whole economy is, but where is our industry and what are those opportunities? What are things that we've been thinking about that we should move forward? Companies that went into this on a strong basis and have been able to weather it ought to be able to come out, but they have to clearly articulate again, not to customers, but to all the people who are critical. You might be raring to go, but are your suppliers going to be able to be there with you? Are your employees going to be able to be there with you? So those are the types of communications that we've been really focused on. And I agree with that. I agree with that completely, Monty, because, and also what we've also been doing is really brainstorming as a group. We've brought our entire team together and because, you know, looking at everything and talking about all of the different possibilities that could be happening down the road because they're all unknowns and trying to become a, get a plan together of how we would address it and what the what ifs of the world. And, you know, getting your um, office and your community, your employees together and get them revived and get them thinking outside the box is also a way of looking at how you can address, how you can work right now. I know for us particularly, we are actually offer, you know, we're telling a lot of our clients, you know, of what, we are suggesting them to do to get ready for this next phase. And a lot of that is because this world is going to be all right now, we are so used to being online anyways, but a lot of people have certainly ignored their online presence and 
that is the thing that I think needs to be really focused on for everybody, addressing their websites, looking at it, changing the copy, making it um, up to date. That's when people are going to be, right now, people are going to be looking online for sources and getting your SEO up to speed, I think is the number one thing that, well, one of the number one things that we're really suggesting people. And that can be done right now while we're all uh, out of the office, right? A hundred percent. These are, these are things that, that can be done. What are, what are some additional things that people can be thinking about very specifically in terms of what, that, what they can be looking at for their communications and marketing strategies uh, at this time? Do y'all have some, some pointers along those lines? I, I have two things. One is that you should expect everything that you say and write will become an external document. Um, you know, sometimes we think, oh, we'll, we'll just share this with employees. And, you know, you really need to go into this thinking, uh, whatever we communicate about this issue, even if it's just with a small group of employees, is going to become external. Because I do think that that frames the way you, you say things. And it makes you, quite, you know, really think through, is this the right decision for us to make? And then the second thing is, I do think that packaging matters right now. I think that uh, we're through this initial phase where everybody was sending out an email. The way that you package up this information, how it looks, how it feels, how consistently you deliver that shows that you're in control. I mean, you know, the work that Beth does and the work that we do is about not just creating the message, but how do we, you know, how do we package that? How do we deliver that? And if you can get to a place where it is uh, consistent and reassuring that's going to help people who are totally overloaded with communication. Beth, how about you? Yeah, I totally agree with that. From my standpoint, what we've been trying to say to people, Monty is the expert of all the communication side of this. I'm looking at it in more of the, let's think about where we want to be in six months to a year. Let's think of the plan of how we get it. I think now is the time um, that we need to look at our business from an outsider looking in. We're not running in and running out every single day. Uh, I'm talking more of like on the marketing side of how we want to adjust, adjust the way that we are running our business and what we want to do and also future opportunities that are going to be down the road. Are there things that you were saying that you really wanted to do but you haven't had an opportunity to do them? Now is the time that several people are sitting at home not able to do their day in and day out jobs, but can really think of outside the box situations and planning ahead to try to, how to get that out and putting out a, you know, putting it out to the rest of the team at your office of how you can make these things different and, and how you can get this stuff done in the next month or so. Yeah, yeah. Monty, I want to go back to something that you say, because I think a lot of times um, people don't, um, completely uh, address their their own workforce um, like their like their customers right so you know, they, they're customers of, of your own organization's information I, I read an interesting article this morning by Mark Cuban that said the way you treat your employees in this crisis right now is going to be remembered for a long time by them and, and by others do you agree with that statement I, I completely agree with that statement. And that is why we start with, you know, your internal communications are then what set the tone for how you're going to radiate outwards. So let me ask you both this question while I've got you um, as well. Um, you, you, Monty, you talked about packaging and, and I agree with that, but, but what is the, what is, what do y'all feel is the, kind of the timing and frequency of messaging right now as we're going through this, this process. You know, it, it, it seems like you could inundate people with an awful lot of information on a regular basis since we're all in front of essentially our computer screens on a day in day, you know, almost on a, on a minute by minute basis. What are you all telling your clients in terms of frequency, timing, messaging, all of that sort of thing. Is there a place where you get to where you're, you, you can become irrelevant because you're overloading people? 
Yes, I'll let, I'll let Beth take the first stab at that, but my answer is yes, you can totally um, overload people. And I, think so, and I think that's the most important thing. I'm getting more and more, about, more and more annoyed when people are sending out information telling me to wash my hands. I know that. Um, I think it's most important that if you have something to say and you have something that's really relevant, don't write a book. Write a quick statement and let people know. Or put it off on a week and send it out on a weekly basis. But don't put, it, put something out there that is worthwhile that people want to hear. Give them something that they want to read. Putting another, putting your name in their inbox is only going to remind you that, remind them that it's another thing that they're going to delete. And you're also getting really scared of the, ch the chance that they're going to unsubscribe you. And then you just lost somebody that was so important to you. And you're, you're never going to get those back if you over, over um, send. Overwhelm them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I also think we're entering this new phase where, you know, how, so, so the world is now divided into two businesses, right? You're either an essential business and allowed to be open or you're non-essential and you're supposed to be closed. And so a lot of businesses that are open are trying to explain to people why they are essential and they're, they're facing some backlash from, from customers, but they're also facing a ton of backlash from employees who are on the front lines uh, serving, sometimes don't have enough protection, and those employees are starting to really raise their voices. And so figuring out what your policies are and how you're treating those employees, I think that over the next month is going to be a critical factor for companies that are still operating, uh, being able to talk about what they're doing, why they're doing it, how they're trying to protect employees, and defending against people who say that they're not doing enough. So you can almost see coming at a phase where there's going to be some, some public shaming involved in some of this, Monty, would you think? It's happening now. Yeah. I mean, it's happening outside of, uh, outside of our markets. It's happening with Amazon. It's happening with Whole Foods. It's, it is happening right now. And I think that over the next two weeks, you're going to see a lot more of that. I completely agree. And I think, as you said, I think it's happening right now. But um, even even in our community, but on a smaller scale, you hear people are saying that their employer is making them work, and it's absolutely ridiculous that that person is a essential business, and it's a very somebody I just learned that um, I just learned from somebody that his employer asked him to get on a plane and go to Connecticut, and they said no, and they told him that they needed to um, take vacation time if they weren't going to go. That type of thing is, you'll remember that, and that will go really far because it's all about relationships now. Wow. Folks, I'm getting to the end of my questions. I'm not seeing a whole lot pop up on chat, but I'd love to see um, some questions that you all might have for our, for our panelists. Um, I'll ask another one. Uh, uh, what are, what are your clients asking you most right now? When, when, when they call you and you pick up the phone, what's the concern, what's the question uh, right now of the day? Is that a question to Beth and I? To both of you, yes, yes. If okay. you want to take it, go. Uh, I, I would say the most frequently asked question right now is how to respond to comments on uh, Facebook and Twitter that are being posted on company sites. And our policy is that we take those offline, we respond via an email or a direct message, uh, acknowledging their question, trying to answer their question. Um, and then if they, if that does not satisfy them, I'd say about 40% of the time it satisfies them. 60% uh, of the time it makes them more angry and they post another comment and then we have to make decisions about, are we going to hide that comment? Are we going to uh, just let it sit there? Are we going to respond to it publicly? And each one is different. You know, Facebook has changed its settings. So it's, it's very hard for a commercial account to block somebody now, but you do have other options. But I'd say figuring out how to deal with all these comments that are being posted on social media is, is a challenge. Good, bad. Yeah, for us, it's much, it's much more of a what can we do right now to move forward? And that's how we've been addressing this with our clients. We have been putting um, more, uh, revising more marketing plans than you could ever imagine, more mm -hmm. strategies than you can imagine. And we're just looking forward to seeing what's the next 
what can we do right now to be ready for when everything is back to business? It will never be back to business as usual, but what do we expect that and how are we going to address it? So that's really what we've been trying to focus on the most. So, so Beth, will you tell us when that day is? When, yeah, when don't we wish. <laughs> it's all going to be every minute of every day. My God, I'm, just, I'm hoping that, you know, all, if I say the word agile one more time, that's like every <laughs> single day we make a plan. You know, and I've said to every client, you know, we make a plan, but, and we are trying these plans, but every single day we look at the plan and we make a change to it because there's no such thing as a whole plan for the year or a whole plan, you know, a whole strategy any longer because every minute is going to change yep. the way we yep. are. Crazy times, crazy mm -hmm. times. Yep, uh, agile pivot. Where you know, I don't know how how many more uh, times we can say. You just got to be ready for the next thing that's coming down. So yeah. Um, all right, let me go. Let me go to some of these questions. Somebody said, and, and uh, Al, for a small business of any size, what are the top three things we should be doing, and what are the top three not to do? Um, Maybe we'll give Monty the top three not to do, and Beth, you get the top three to do. What What are the top three they should be doing? For me, is really analyzing your business and seeing how you want want to move forward. Getting your team together and getting everybody to have open ideas and open forums to say that what can have everybody thinking about the different concepts and different things. Um, I really highly, highly recommend anybody looking at their website, changing the copy. Google only, Google likes you to change your website copy. Google likes you to add photos to your uh, My Business page. Google likes you to make sure, and you got to make sure that the SEO and the words that you want to come up for, from are also in your website. Now is the time to do all of those things that sometimes people push off the most and these are going to be, this is the most imperative thing that I think that you can do right now. Beth, can't you do that for us? Yes, I can, of course. <laughs> but you know what? I, we certainly can. But in the same thing, people can do it on their own yep. as well. So, um, but you can't do it without input from the, from the business. I mean, you, you, you're, you're not a substitute for, for no. strategic thought within the business. I say that on a regular basis. When people want us to, you know, we can certainly create something, but it's your business, it's your, your frame of mind, it's what you think. So we have to learn the most from our clients and then we're able to adapt and change and maybe edit and maybe put it into more marketing terms and look at from, a, from an outsider's perspective that they don't see it that way. But most, the people who own these businesses know their businesses more than anybody else and they're in and out. Yeah. We're the ones that can look outside the box and give them a little different um, point of view sometimes. Monty, I'm giving you the not to do's. What what should we be doing right now? I think uh, I can think of two things. One is don't you know if you're the CEO of a small company and it's your business, you know don't just send stuff out without getting input from those other people who sit at the table with you, whether they're your employees or outside uh, people you employ. You know, legal has a point of view. HR has a point of view, operations has a point of view, uh, finance, and you really need to hear and have those discussions as a team before you start sending stuff out because it's very easy to say something on one front and create problems on other fronts. So that's the first thing. And then as I said before, I think right now don't overreact one way or another. If you have a game plan and you know what you are trying to do with your business and you feel comfortable about that, Certainly you can adjust it, but you know, reacting to what people say online, reacting to somebody who calls and is upset, it's about figure out your plan and spend the time to do that and then communicate it clearly. Expect that you're going to get some pushback, but move forward with, with what you've laid out and that will help reassure your, you know, the majority of folks that you do have a plan, you do know what you're doing, and you're going to get through this. Yeah, and I would, I think I'd add to that. Don't stop. Don't don't keep. Yeah. <laughs> keep moving forward, because <laughs> once you stop, it's harder to get restarted again. I I know things may slow down a little bit, but don't stop. Please don't stop. I got a great question here that was sent to me privately from from Atticus. Uh, how about from a strategic communications point of view? What companies do you all see doing some innovative things to maintain effective communication? Um, who do you see out there that's doing doing some good work? 
and it doesn't have to be in our community. It could be outside. What what examples are you seeing? Mm. You know, it's it's a blur. I I, I don't remember the names <laughs> of the companies, but uh, I think that you know I've seen some companies that have had their CEOs do some uh, Zoom meetings, answering questions for employees, which is always a challenge, right? But but really striking that blend of empathy because it really makes a difference. If you've got a company where there are a number of people who have tested positive uh, you know, for coronavirus, um, these are people that, that people know. And so I think the, using different technologies, whether that's an online social chat, video, but breaking out of their traditional ways of communicating, I, I have seen some examples of that, but I'm drawing a blank on the specific companies. Yeah. I am too. I'm with you, Monty. I feel like everything is a blur. One day I'm seeing something and, you know, it, I feel like I don't even really know what happened in the last two weeks. You know, you just kind of blink your eyes and it's been gone. Yeah. I, I think the one uh, thing that I've seen, I'm, I'm a pretty frequent flyer with Delta. Um, and I remember, you know, they've been sending regular updates, but one of the, one of the first emails was all about what we're trying to do to keep travel safe and that sort of thing. And then one of the last things was, I know you all are concerned about your frequent flyer status. We'll get to that. <laughs> Relax. You know, we're not worrying about that. We're not, we're worried about safety right now. I'm not worried about your frequent flyer status. And it was done in a very, a very nice way, but it was kind of like, we, we're going to, we're going to do the first things first. And I appreciated that. Um, you know, <laughs> I have to say, Brent, I think you guys have done a great job. You really quickly adapted to trying to get people to connect um, via Zoom and giving advice and help, but you haven't over inundated everybody. I think you all have done a great job. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, as you know, it's a team effort. Monty, we always take your advice of making sure that we've got everybody involved in our, in our communication. And so, um, you know, everybody went moving as fast as they could forward um, and got this thing started and it's uh, I think it's been good to help bring our our own chamber community together on a regular basis um, yep. got a specific question from the Greensboro grasshoppers uh, but maybe more in terms of entertainment outlets in Greensboro I can't wait until this thing is is over because I think we're gonna have sellouts at the grasshoppers sellouts at the Tanger Center and we're just all going to be even though even some of us who are somewhat introverted, even though you, you might not believe that, um, are going to be excited to get out and do that. But what what should entertainment outlets be be sending out to the community um, right now on a on a uh, in this in this day and age this time? Yeah, we're coming back. From my standpoint, I I think I think um, putting too much out there is not necessary. Just saying and being supportive because once you come back i think people are going to be inundated with heading out there yep people are going to want to get out of the house monty what's your thoughts i uh, i have a much more pessimistic point of view <laughs> and and that's that sort of goes back to this jagged re-entry i don't know if there is a clean end to this where we say hey we're back and every sporting event is back on and i mean if, if this plays out the way that you hear some experts talking, you know, this, this virus does not die in four weeks. And so I think that there will be concern among the public about congregating in groups, yeah. that there will be concern about getting back together for these big communal events. And I don't know how that plays out for sports. I think that sports organizations, entertainment organizations are going to be talking about health and safety and protective measures for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, forever. Yeah. So maybe it's a good time for them to start thinking about how that works in their own venue, right? How, Correct. How to make mm -hmm. sure that when people come back, they're going to feel like they're, like they're safe um, in that regard. And you're, you're probably right. This, this jagged reentry, uh, you know, and it, it could be also, it could be geographic reentry as well. Um, some yeah. areas could get back into it before others. That's what we've seen in other um, countries, right? So we'll have to see about that. Got one more here, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, from an agency perspective, what is your take on your clients maintaining your presence 
or securing a future presence with an out of home advertising campaign at this time? What are you telling your clients at this time? Is it, is it time to, to buy advertising and get on the TV and in the newspaper and that sort of thing? Or what, what is, what is your advice? Or, or maybe it just depends. From my standpoint, well, I it, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Beth. No, go ahead. Um, from my standpoint, it all depends on the type of client. I mean, we have some clients that we have totally stopped all advertising. Um, the minute this, the minute we even saw anything in the United States, we stopped all advertising um, because it wasn't appropriate. So, I, from my standpoint, it is all based on um, what is appropriate and what's not. You don't want people to feel as though you're out there selling. Uh, or pushing too, too hard right now if in this market. I think um, compassion is such a big point. Um, so I think it's all about helping. And if you want to, and if you can offer help and assistance, then that's when I'm telling people to um, advertise. Money? Yeah, it, nobody should be spending money on out of home when there is a stay at home order. Um, but I do think that we know that people are more than ever on their phones, watching TV. And so it, it is, and, and advertising is down. So this is to a, a time if you want to move forward and make a buy, but I would make the buy for, you know, an extended period of time so that you can adjust that messaging. I agree right now, uh, as Beth said, is not the time to just sort of push a product, but, it will come back. And so right now is a good time to make investments, but I would say that April is not a good month for you to be trying to, to promote or sell any particular product unless it is toilet paper, which <laughs> by the way, will sell itself. That's, that's exactly right. All you got to do is advertise that you have it, right? That's the, that's correct. The, where could it be more valuable than gasoline right now? Right. All right. Any other questions? I think we've I think we've exhausted them. Thank you, uh, Monty. Thank you, Beth, for agreeing to join us. Um, we really appreciate it. I think this has been a great conversation. A lot of great tips. Um, it'll be interesting to see how many phases we have of this um, uh, this this process that we're going through to get to the other side of the COVID nineteen crisis. But you all have certainly given us a lot to think about today. So thank you for that. Thank you, everybody who joined us. Thank you. Uh, a call. Um, we appreciate it. Um, tomorrow, again, we have rescheduled our Monday call, so we'll be talking to uh, folks at uh, the Community Foundation for Greater Greensboro and the United Way about the Greensboro COVID-19 Relief Fund and, and how you can participate um, and that sort of thing. So we'll be really excited to, to hear from those folks tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow again at three o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Hope to hear from you again tomorrow. Take care. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.